What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Andy the Middle-Aged Gamer and this is the comparison video between the KWA F90 GBBR and the KWA Tavor SAR21 Flattop GBBR. Now, as always, before we jump in, usual disclosures ahead, this is our airsoft toys. They are not real firearms. There are no real firearms in this video or in any of my videos. This video was filmed here in the United Kingdom and was filmed in a safe and controlled private location with no other risk to other persons or property. As per YouTube guidelines, all safety protocols have been taken whenever using these, such as eye protection, etc. And just to top that off, this video is made for educational and entertainment purposes only. So this is not an endorsement or a promotion video for any other company or retailer out there where do not promote sale of firearms. Now that I've got that out of the way, it's a case of hopefully that pleases the person manually reviewing this video as has seemed to be the local fashion from YouTube and they understand that this is for those millions of players around the world that want to actually play and enjoy safely airsoft. Now with that out of the way, let's jump in. So why am I making this video? Well, the main reason is to show the progression of KWA and how their build quality has gone from being good to really good and how certain little upgrades have given a great comfort of life and how I wish that they would bring them for the Tavor. That would be absolutely outstanding. I do apologize for any noises in the background. Again, sadly, people are just being idiots and deciding to do it while I'm recording this video. So I do apologize in advance. So with that, let's discuss. So as you can see, the Tavor and the F90 look very, very similar, both being bullpup platforms and based around that sort of design. The differences are going to be in the ergonomics, etc. As I said in the, how would say, Tavor video, you can see the inspirations from the Org with the, how would say, main grip here at the front is uh, very much the same as on the F90 or the AUG, except for the extra material here, and that's due to the grenade launcher thing that you can buy for airsoft and fire 40 millimeter, I would say, mic mics as they call them. So yeah, that's all cool. And I do like the fact that what Lithgow Arms did was take the AUG and innovate it with ergonomics to make it a lot better profile, such as here at the rear and up here at the top, it's just a lot better. Whereas the Tavor still continues the monolithic and flat top, hence its name, the flat top. But that's kind of cool. Now, the easiest way to show the main upgrades are gonna be to show you the insides. So with that being said, let's disassemble, let's have a look. Okay, so at the top you've got the F90 and at the bottom we've got the Tavor. As you can see, the Tavor has fewer parts that are easily accessed and able to field strip, which is one of the great things that KWA did. They really did make the F90 as close to the real thing they can do, but making it so that no, you can't convert it to live fire or anything like that. But it gives you that same training because the whole point of Airsoft is for training. It really does help you learn and become prepared, which is great. It's a good educational tool in that respect. So let's have a look. Now, what we can do, as you can see, is we can start with the fact that, yes, you can easily remove the fire control group on the F90, and it is still made of steel with a polymer shell, just like the real one, but obviously the real one uses polymer fire controls inside it, or what you want to call it. But, you know, for Airsoft, this is phenomenal and works really well. Of course, it's simple with the one pin to access that at the rear, but there's a lot more disassembly required in order to do the top. But one of the main differences between the two, the barrel systems inside, i.e. The, the inner barrels are KWA spec and the bookings are KWA, although with the F90, you do have a new rubber, I would say, material let's put it that way it's a new type of rubber which is really good and does keep the hop more precise um, but that's evolutionary as the years have gone by but if i take 
Okay, so if I take the bolt carrier out, here you will see the nozzle. Now if I take the nozzle from here, you will notice a considerable size difference. In order to make this universally acceptable for many airsoft fields out there and not in just a single DMR roll, you can see that they reduced the size of their nozzles down to here, but they did keep the full metal, I would say, nozzle bit there and guide rod, and that is basically molded into the polymer nozzle itself. And like I say, this is just a lot more awesome. You do have a little roller here, just like the real steel, but it just works as it should do. So that is awesome. The other differences was down to the hot chamber. Now, of course, with the Tavort, if I flip this around again, you do have the old style there, which, like I say, requires a key. And of course, people lose those keys. Um, when I got this, it didn't come with the key because, again, the owner, uh, previous owner had decided to lose it. And so we now get to the new style of hop, which you can see here is a rotary one. It's easily adjustable with minimal, just pop the pin, slide this forward an inch and you'll gain access to that with your finger. And it works very, very well. Just well built in that respect. This is how they should have done it, but obviously you need to learn from their own experiences. Now, the Tavor was better in the internals because they used a full metal chassis here. There is steel guides here, I would say, for the trigger to allow it to link up to the fire control group and work. Again, having it fitted in there in a more permanent way means that those linkages are not going to slip. You're not going to bend them. You're not going to damage them by keep disassembly. But they did already learn that with the org. And as you can see, your trigger linkage bars will go here and here on this side and push in and that will work the action. So again, it's something that they have learned over the years, but at the time that the Tavor was made, they just couldn't get to work properly, so they made it that way. With the F90, they've just gone one step further. Now, of course, the F90 is really is a modernized version of the Org, but with enough changes to warrant the fact that they don't need a license to do it. Whereas if they took a few off, they would. Again, you can remove the inner barrel with the tool, but the disassembly to do so is very, very complicated and not an easy way of getting that done. But when you do fully disassemble this, you can gain access to the barrel and swap out your booking and what have you, if you wish. Again, there are many, I would say, guides on there. If you want me to do a guide on that, then let me know in the comments. I'll do a short video on that as an update. I'm still currently trying to get that nozzle down to a reasonable FPS. Again, it's very difficult when they don't manufacture this. So, again, it's the thing between KWA. They like to prior oh, proprietize everything. And that does frustrate a lot of us, I would say, out there. Now, when it comes to magazines, again, this, without knocking my camera, this Tavor magazine is really heavy. This F90 is really light. You're talking... Size-wise, you've got a little bit more spare size on this, but this one does, I would say, have more efficiency than this and does not leak, whereas this one leaks like a sieve. So, again, it's going to be, as they've learned, they've gotten better, and the F90 is just one awesome piece of kit. Yes, the manual of arms of having the bolt release here, on the side, meaning that your support hand has to do everything and then slap it to drop that bolt if you want to use it, or you're still going to have to rack the bolt. You know, it's going to be one of those that, depending on how you want to do it, what becomes quick for you. Um, again, let me know in the comments down below which way you prefer to do it. It'd be awesome to learn. Um, but yeah, basically, they're your kind of upgrades internally to this system that they made. Again, both triggers are great, but as that one is a two-stage with the F90, they really did work on that trigger linkage and make it so that it is very crisp and very nice and easy to discern between semi and full. And just in case you can't figure it out, you've got the lockout button underneath, which is really good. So let's get these put back together and go over our final thoughts. Okay, so if you've gotten this far in the video and you like what you see but you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit the notification bell and that like button and that way YouTube knows that you like the video and will recommend it and you get notified whenever I upload a brand new video. Of course, 
If you want to go one step further, you can actually donate to the channel through the YouTube thanks button. That is basically YouTube's version of buying me a coffee and allows me to put even bigger and better weapons a lot faster than me doing it myself. But it's entirely up to you. A huge thank you just in case. And even if you don't, a huge thank you just for the consideration. You guys are amazing and it's because of you that I'm able to do this. So with that being said, let's move on to final thoughts. So... The way I see it is KWA have come a long way with the way that they made the Tavor to the way that they make the F90. Their new hop-up system and their new nozzle system and quality of the booking has been improved. Their magazines are better, more gas efficient, more reliable and slightly cheaper. So are generally a really good buy for today and I would highly recommend the F90 for anyone. Yes, the barrel length is quite long. But because it is a bullpup, that's not really a problem. It's no longer than a standard AR-15 if you want that. But you do have the long barrel, so you can use it as a DMR or in certain CQB arenas. Now, when it comes to the Tavor, it's really compact, giving you a nice long barrel and more, very good accuracy. But it is using the more dated now technology, something that KWA themselves saw and replaced. So... Yes, there's thousands of parts for that that you can easily still access. But as the time goes by, those will become far fewer and harder to find. And that kind of like leads me to where we're at. If we can get the F90 sales through the roof for KWA, as they say, it's more inclined to do more of these so that we have more of an option to bring, I would say, variety to the airsoft game. Like I say... A bullpup is a good spice of life improvement when you're in the gameplay and you're seeing someone with a bullpup, you're like, hey, that's really cool. Instead of the boring, how would you say, stuff. So again, it comes down to you and your opinions. And I would love to know down in the comments below. Both of these are outstanding pieces of kit. And if you can get hold of a Tavor and find a way to get that FPS down, You've got yourself a really good historical weapon there that's going to last you a long time. If you don't and you just want a bullpup, the best bullpup on the market right now is the F90 KWA. I've knocked it out the ballpark and have made a really great option. Yes, people are going to say, what about the GHK Org? That's really good. And it would be really good considering the fact that they have now discontinued the A2 officially and the A3, well, they make it when and they can never be bothered to do. It's like a handful every couple of years. And to be honest with you, parts and maintenance and the cost of the rifle make it really inaccessible for the majority of players out there that want to bullpup and want to go that different route. They're just not easily accessed. So I would say the F90 is better than that at this moment in time. Plus, add in to the fact that GHK are currently halting production of their stuff to test the QA on the AK. We all know what happened to poor Bada Bing and 98% of everyone else out there that bought one. You receive as a bent in four places, parts were missing, like the um, click no bang feature that should have been with the gun in the launch. Now you're having to be stuck installing it yourself, etc, uh, etc. Et just things that are just unacceptable in today's climate kwa brought this they delayed it last year uh for a whole year and then released it and it finally hit the market and it has just been a year worth the wait and i can just say from the bottom of my heart that is an absolute amazing piece and will always be an amazing piece so with that being said we've reached the end of the video i'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments below which one would you pick the tavor or the f90 hit let me know down there and I will catch you in the next one. I've been the Middle-Aged Gamer, and you guys have been absolutely amazing.